All right, Shalom, Shalom. shalom. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh, by Hashem, Makak, and the saying of double honors to the apostles and the bishop elders, the great millstone for teaching us this word in the truth and sincerity, to the ruling well, and salutations to my fellow Akim across the four quarters of the globe, preaching and prophesying in the name of Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh, by Hashem, Shalom to the elect. Hey, I'm my brother, the boy Yahweh, there from GMS, Hawaii, coming to you with another quick lesson. In this lesson, it's going to center around um, the hell doctrine, you know, what's being pushed by the Catholic Church, what's also being pushed by these uh, false prophets, like such as Bishop Nate from the IUIC, and all those who believe in that simple doctrine, you know, and they put it in pop culture, they've been in movies, it's well written and documented that, you know, the ancient Israelites didn't have an idea of a place where you burn forever. Matter of fact, it's a lot. Doctrine, um, which is something that was brought up uh, through Christianity out of um, um, somebody's mind, you know. And the scriptures teach us against uh, <clears throat> taking heed to fables. Let me get that real quick, right? To taking heed to old wives' tales and fables, and hell is one of them, all right? <clears throat> hell is one of them, okay? And we've been down this road before. It will continue to go for you brothers and you sisters that just coming into the faith, <clears throat> coming out of that Christian world, so-called Christian doctrine, right? Right. This is uh, 1 Timothy 1 and 4. Neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies, which minister questions rather than godly edifying. And that whole fable of hell, that's not godly edifying, especially when we're talking about um, the mercy of the Most High. We're talking about the grace of Yahweh Bashem Shai. We're talking about the mercy of Yahweh Bashem Shai as it pertains to his people. And hell is not a sense of worship, of worship. Hell is not a sense of mercy right there. That's just a fable, you know? It says, uh, uh, First Timothy 4 and 7, but refuse profane and old wives' tales and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. And to believing in hell, you're not exercising yourself unto godliness, okay? What you're doing is you're taking heed and you're um, accepting these profane things. Let me read this in the NLT. It says, do not waste time arguing over godless ideas and old wives' tales. Instead, train yourself to be godly. And that's what we're doing. That's what the apostles and the bishop elders of Great Millstone are teaching us to do, is training us into godliness. And we're leaving off from these false doctrines, right? These false ideals, such as a hell. You know, there is a spirit world where we rest and it's a world of peace. It's a it's a spirit, it's a it's a world beyond this world where the Heavenly Father Yahweh and Yahweh Shai currently dwell right now, along with the, the heavenly host of angels and all those who pass from this life back into that life. Because we've all been there before. All right. In fact, everything in this world, everything in this physical realm came out of the, <clears throat> the spiritual realm. Through the word of Yahweh Bashmi Yahushai. All right? So it says in traditional Christian doctrine, which we're in right now, hell was conceived. Let's look up that word, it was born out of, as a place, right? This came out of somebody's mind, right? And then you know you get the images, the Dante's Inferno images, right? You get these images. Oh, it's too small. You get images like this, right? I'm going to click on that thing in a second, but it says, in traditional Christian doctrine, hell was conceived as a place generally beneath the earth. And there is no hell beneath the earth, right? Dirt, there's water, there's there is there's a fire, you know, because you have the earth's core. You know what I'm saying? Molten lava, molten that's what that's what comes out of the earth and through volcanoes, man. But that ain't the entrance to hell. That's not Satan's ass or Satan's anus, all right? But there's no there's no general there's no place like this that's generally beneath the earth, right? Hell was conceived as a place generally beneath the earth. And this comes out of Babylonian doctrine, Greek doctrine, you know, uh Persian doctrine, Zoroastrianism, you know. Hell was conceived as a place generally beneath the earth, where the wicked would be punished for eternity. And that we know that that's not the case. You know, even the e Esau the wicked. He's not going to be punished eternally. He get a thousand years and he's going to be destroyed. You know what I'm saying? The wicked of our people, what? You get judged here, right? 
It says, where, where the wicked will be punished for eternity. There will be both psychological torment at our knowing we had lost the opportunity for salvation, which that's not the case, and physical ones inflicted by the devil and his demons, like, uh, what's his name? Uh, High Priest Shishaya said that you're going to get punched in the face. So he's going to punch you in the face. So this is all many, this came from somebody's mind. This is not scriptural. You know, five things to know. What does it say? Five things to know about the traditional Christian doctrine of hell. And if and if people actually believe that there was a hell where these kind of torments would happen to you, why? how come you not live in a perfect life here on earth? Because that ain't the case. It ain't true. Right? It ain't true. It ain't true at all. I said most of us, most of us are going there. We're all doomed. Saint Paul, as Falu has reminded us, believe that homosexuals and immorals, idolaters, adulterers, thieves, and greedy, drunkards, revilers, and robbers would not inherit the kingdom of the Most High. Right. So you, those Israelites that are in that mindset in this world will die in their sins because these are all sins anyway. So you're gonna die in your sin. You're gonna die here in the fire, which is going to be the nuclear fire, which these people they had no understanding of that back then, right? First Corinthians 6 and 9, it says, Jesus said nothing about homosexuals, but he clearly indicated that most of us enter hell through the wide gate that leads to destruction, which is the way of this world, as well as homosexuality, right? It says, um, a few through the narrow gate that leads to life, which that's what we're walking right now which is his path of truth. Matthew 7, 13, 14. In short, the vast majority are doomed to hell. For centuries, this was the default position for both the both Catholic and Protestant. And that's what, like Apostle Hard teaches, this stuff came out of the Catholic Church, right? And that's why I had showed this picture first. This is from a 2018 movie called Robin Hood. And in the movie, in a movie, one of the cardinals, his name is Cardinal uh, Franklin, right? It says, fear is the greatest weapon in God's arsenal. It is why church, it is why church created hell, right? It says, fear is the greatest arsenal. It's, it's, it's the, it is why the church, what, what church is that? The Catholic church invented hell so they can get people to give them money, so they can get people to reverence them. But they were wicked as fuck, just like they are today, you know? Here it is, we live in a world where they teach everything against the scriptures, but yet <clears throat> they tell you about a place called hell. And then they support these things. They support homosexuals, thieves, robbers, adulterers. They, they support that in this world, right? It says, uh, anyway, let's keep on reading. It says, re responding to Wilkinson, Ill said rather blandly that the mainstream Christian belief on this is that all of us are born going to hell and we will end up there if we decline the sacrifice of jesus christ on the cross which no one named jesus christ was sacrificed on that cross his name is jehovah shai hamashiach which is hamashiach a title being anointed but his name is jehovah shai it says for modern conservative protestants while in principle god has the final say on who is saved and who is damned the clear expectation is that only those who are born again have any sort of chance, sort of a chance. And to be born again, you gotta be Israelite. And be born again, be born in the mind. It has nothing to be, you don't turn your life to somebody named Jesus Christ. That's not it. So in traditional Christian doctrine, hell was conceived as a place generally beneath the earth where the wicked would be punished for eternity. There would be both psychological torment at our knowing we had lost the opportunity for salvation. A physical ones inflicted by the devil and his demons. <laughs> this is crazy. There were there were gnawing worms, unquenchable fires. No escape from the hell or mitigation of eternal torment was possible. And that's that's just all. It says the judgment, the decision as to whether we went to heaven or hell was made by God at the time of our deaths, which is a lie. Which is a lie. Everybody goes to the spirit world and rested the general judgment of all the resurrected dead on the final day of judgment merely confirmed god's previous one well where's the scriptures at they put scriptures out they put no scriptures here it says as the greatest catholic theologian thomas 
Aquinas rather elegantly put it, the soul will remain perpetually in whatever last end it is found to have set for itself at the time of death, desiring that state as the most suitable whether good is good or evil. And that's just off. And, it, and, and this is a this is a wives' tale, right? This is a wives' tale, and that's why the Lord told um, Paul and he spoke to Timothy, but refuse profane and old wise fables and, and, and exercise thyself in godliness, right? And that's right. Let's look up that word for wives' tale in the Greek for fables, mythos, and that's what it is. Hell is a myth that was contrived, con conceived out of the mind of a man. Some simple simpleton, you know, because our forefathers had no idea of of a place called hell where you burn forever. Well, we do know about the spiritual world, which I'm going to show you, but that word there for fable is mythos, which is a speech or saying, a narrative, a story. It's not a true narrative. It's a fiction, a fable, an invention of falsehood. Right? And that's exactly what that is. It's an invention of falsehood. And this is an excerpt from a movie called Robin Hood. Right? But I thought it was good because Esau, he puts little truths within his movies, right? And it's just a, a fear tactic. Give us your money, support the Catholic Church, make penance, and then when these Christian denominations broke off, such as Protestant, Lutheranism, and all the rest of these babies that came out of the Catholic Church, they brought that shit right along with them. And today, Nate Nathaniel, Bishop Nathaniel of the IUIC is bringing that into uh, the Israelite doctrine. You know, and he's mucking about. He got you thinking that people going to get resurrected and burn. Oh, it's going to be burning forever, eternity. That's not the case. That's not the case at all. And that fire that is spoken about is the nuclear fire, which he talks about the nuclear fire, but that's the, that's the fire, right? And that's not going to last forever. Because remember, America is going to be turned into what? A desert, right? A desert. This is, so I typed this up. Did the ancient Jews have any concept of hell? When did the idea of hell as we know it develop? And I, I got this from reddit.com, academic biblical comments, right? It says the concept of hell conflates a number, and let's look up that word for conflate. <clears throat> Search on Google, conflates, conflates. Conflates. Oh, it's not. Right. Conflate, conflated. It says, combine two or more texts into one. Urban, so that's what it's conflated. Let's get that word. Conflated, conflate. The same thing. It's to combine something. And what it did was it combined um, different, uh, it says, so it says the concept of hell combines a number, which that's what conflate means, a number of different New Testament Eschatological, eschatological notions which were related to each other by distinct Hades, Gehenna, the lake of fire and revelation. These are two different, these are all three different things. Man. First of all, Hades is something that came out of it, the mind of a Grecian, right? And then you got Gehenna, which is a place we burn trash. And then you have the lake of fire, which is going to be America on fire. The idea of post mortem punishment. In a fiery place, <laughs> or following the resurrection of Judgment Day, essentially developed in the period between the books of the Old Testament, <clears throat> where were composed and before the New Testament was written, largely drawing on exegesis of Isaiah 66 and 24. Let's go to there real quick. Let's go to Isaiah 66 and 24. Isaiah 66 and 24. Isaiah 66 and 24, right? It says, And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me. Let's read up above. Um, and it shall, this is Isaiah 66 and 23 and 24. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from the Sabbath to another shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord, Yahweh, Bashan Yahweh Shah. And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me, for their worms shall not die, neither shall their fire be quenched. And they shall be an abhorring 
abhorring unto all flesh. So this is where somebody took this scripture and then they came up, they contrived or conceived the idea of hell, right? But that's that's not in the scriptures, right? Uh, a fire that burns them will never go out. All who pass by will view them with utter horror, right? Anyway, let's go back to this. It says, applying it to no longer to corpses, but to souls. So they just added that. It says, people raised and people raised to life for judgment who experience torture and fire. I have written up a survey of how this belief developed between the Old Testament here. Um, let me see. Right? There was also possible influence from Zoroastrianism, which had a concept of hell as a place of molten metal for the wicked. Though the notion is one of purification, the only and temporary and only temporary ordeal. Another influence is the Greek concept of Tardis, right? Let's look up Tardis. As a dark prison for the Titans, which contributed to the Enochic concept of a gloomy abyss where the fallen angels were imprisoned and tortured with fire. Enoch, what's his one Enoch extended concept? Uh, which originally pertained only to the watchers, to the wicked humans, Jude 6 and 66, Jude is one chapter, uh, verse 6 and 7, which compared an imprisonment of the fallen angels. And that prison is, is the body. It's not it's not talking about a place where you burn forever. So I'm just looking up the term Tardis. Uh, Tardis. Tardis, a Greek, in Greek mythology, Tardis or ancient Greek, Tardis is the deep abyss that is used as a dungeon of torment and suffering for wicked as a prison for the Titan. See, and it's a this is all mythology. And this is not true. Right? We can read the book of Job and we can tell you that that's that the wicked don't go to a place where you burn forever, right? This is Job three and eleven. Why did I not why died I not? This is Job lamenting. Why did I Job three and eleven? Why died I not? From the womb why did i not give up the ghost when i came out of the belly why did the knees prevent me or why the breast that i should suck for now should i have lain still and been quiet right a stillbirth he was he was you know was limited he said he'd rather be dead than go through what he was going through i should have slept then had i been at rest right because when you when you die, when you so called die, you're at rest. You're sleeping. That's all. You're sleeping in the spirit world. Meaning that not like you ain't kicked up with a bed and a sheet over your face. No. <laughs> you your spirit is in the spirit world, resting from all of this. Because this that we live in is really judgment. This is judgment. We're living in judgment right now. You get sick, you get you, you get hurt, you, you get maimed, you die a grievous death, you're born retarded. Those are judgments from the Lord, right? For our wickedness in our past lives. Did not um uh who sinned? Let me see if I can find that. I'm gonna come right back to this. Who sinned? Right? Who sinned? Remember that in the New Testament when they asked him Yahweh shot? Who sinned? This man or his uh or his uh or his um or his parents, right? So I can one find that. Nine and one. It says, Healing the man born blind. And Yahweh passed by and saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin? This man or his parents that he was born blind? So even the disciples understood that this man, that a reason for him being blind was because he had sinned. Wait a minute, but he was born that way, right? So what does that mean? How can a baby sin that was born that way? Well, he or she was here in the previous life. And we know that you could be born blind as a sin. I mean, for you can be born blind as a recompense for a sin or sins you've done in your past lives, right? So we knew that, right? And the disciples asked him saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? And we know that you don't suffer for the sins of your parents, 
We know that in the precepts speak about that, that the, the, the son shall not be punished for the sins of the father and neither the father for the sins of the son. So that means you have to be here before. So they had an understanding of reincarnation, right? And his disciples asked him saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? And Yahweh Shai answered, neither. So this man wasn't born blind because he sinned, neither was he born blind because his, his parents sinned. No, it was because it was going to be an exercise and a healing of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, of faith, right? Yahweh Shai answered, neither have this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of the Most High should be made manifest in him. It's, let me read that in the NLT for you brothers and sisters to understand. It says, it was not because of his sins or his parents' sins. Yahweh Shai answered, this happened so the power of the Most High could be seen in him when he was healed, right? I must work the works of him that sent me. The Lord, Heavenly Father, Yahweh, sent Yahweh Shai back on earth through his father, through his mother, to be born, to heal this man. While it is day, the night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. That's right, the world of Israel. Right? So let's go back to this. What was I reading? I was reading Job, right? So we're back in Job, right? So we know that it don't matter what you do in this life, you ain't gonna be you're gonna burn somewhere forever and ever. Now, there's something called the second death and the first death. The first death was fire, a, a slide. The first death was water, which was the flood, and the second death, the great death. The Drake judgment was going to be through fire, nuclear fire, and chariot fire here in America. It's going to be con concentrated here in America. All right? And that's, that's going to be a great judgment from the Lord. Right? Anyway, this is uh, Job 3 and 13. For now should I have lain still and been quiet. <clears throat> I should have slept. Then had I been at rest with the kings and counselors of the earth, which built desolate places for themselves. Or with princes that had gold who filled their houses with silver. Or as a hidden untimely birth, I had not been born as infants which never saw, saw light. There the wicked, where is there the spirit world? There the wicked cease from trouble. So the wicked Esau, he's not troubling us. There the weary are at rest. We're the weary. We're at rest. Both of us rest in the spirit world. The wicked and the righteous. There the prisoners rest together. There, I mean, they hear not the voice of the oppressor. The small and great are there, and the servants is free from his master. And that's the spirit world. Wherefore is light given to him that is in misery, and life unto the bitter soul. You know? So there's another precept. It's Ecclesiastes 12 and 7. Then shall the dust, which is this body, this physical body is made from elements of the earth. Right? And you ever heard the term ashes to ashes, dust to dust? Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, <clears throat> and the spiritual shall return unto the mo and the spiritual. And the spirit, let me read that again. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit, which is in our minds, this is, our spirit is here, is, is in our penile gland, right? That's and it's, it's a fire. That's what keeps you warm. That's what keeps the body hot. You know what I'm saying? That's why as soon as you, you this, this body becomes no good as a, a house or abode for the spirit, it gets cold. The body gets cold immediately. Right? Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto the Most High who gave it. Right? So your spirit not going to go to another body and burn in hell and, you know, you get tormented by fucking Satan and his demons. That's not the case, though. Right? That's not the case at all. Judgment is here on earth. This is the book of Ecclesiastes 3 and 16. And moreover, I saw under the sun the place of judgment. What's the place under the sun? The earth. We're walking on it right now. This is a place of judgment. And the people that are being judged in mass right now are the Lord's people, the, the Israelites. And other, other nations go through judgments too. They die, they live, you know, whatever. But this is the place where we're being judged right now. And then when we're in power, these nations are going to be judged. Right? That the time of judgment come. Well, I'm going to come right back to that. This is the book of Revelation 11 and 18. Because right now, these other nations, they're not being judged the way we're being judged. Right? 
Revelations 11 and 18. Revelation 11 and 18. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come, in the time of the dead that they should be judged. Who are the dead? These are the nations, as well as those Israelites that are without this truth, <clears throat> that are wandering <coughs> out of righteousness. They're in the congregation of the dead. And the nations were angry that the that that and thy wrath is come, in the time of the dead that they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants the prophets. This is the reason why we're here again. We're back again to receive our reward, right? Which is salvation, Lord willing. Okay, and then we're going to be first partakers of eternal life because we're going to get those new bodies, but we're going to live here on earth and in all the other planets, right? Right, it says that's that's the reward of the prophets and the saints who are the saints, the Israelites, and them that fear thy name, the elect of Israel, small and great, and should have destroyed them which destroyed the earth, which is Esau, Edom. Okay, so this is judgment. This is a place of judgment. And more, uh, Ecclesiastes 3 and 16. Moreover, I saw under the sun a place of judgment that wickedness was there, excuse me, in a place of righteousness that iniquity was there. And let's get down. Verse 21 Who knoweth the spirit of man that goeth upward? When you die, your spirit goes directly out of your body and back to the Heavenly Father. Yeah, how about me? I was shy. Who knows the spirit of man that goeth upward and the spirit of beast that go downward to the earth? Right, because beasts don't need to go to the spirit world because they're in their righteous order, all beasts. Right? They just go right back into the cycle of life and be were born as a pup or whatever, a, a, a baby animal, a, a baby beast. That's it. Wherefore, I perceive that there is nothing better than that a man should rejoice in his own works for that is his portion. For who shall bring him to see what shall be after him? Exactly, because these that's the same way with these other nations. You look at Esau and Edom, they're, they're glory in their work that they do on the earth while they're here. Because after that, they don't know what's coming after that until they go to the spirit world and have that judgment. All right? This is the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 41, and I'm going to go straight to the point, right? Um... I'll, uh, I'll start. It's three and four, right? Ecclesiasticus 41 and three and four. Fear not the sentence of death, right? And that's what the Christian and Catholic Church have put in the minds of the people to fear death. But our forefathers never feared death, no matter how it came, right? Look at Saul. He 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 was he 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 was ready to die because he talked to Samuel from the spirit world via that witch of Endor. And, he, and Samuel told him, hey, you and your sons are going to join me. Now, was Samuel in hell burning? No, he was in the spirit world. He asked him, why are you disquieting me? And he was like, well, because the Lord ain't dealing with me no more. And I want to know if we're going to beat the Philistines. He's like, look, man, that ain't your business. Because you about to join me in the spirit world. Okay? So our forefathers didn't fear death. King David didn't fear death. King Solomon didn't fear death. Yahawashai didn't fear death. He conquered death. Right? Our forefather, uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, never, none of them feared death. They prepared for it, right? They blessed their sons before they died. They didn't worry about hell, and they didn't live. They All three of them men didn't live perfect lives, man. So what, what happened to them? Did they burn in hell? No. So the scripture tells us, fear not the sentence of death. Again, this is what the Catholic Church and the Christian doctrine teaches you to fear death by giving you this idea of a place called, um, a place called hell, man. Fear is the greatest weapon in God's arsenal. It is why the, it's why church, the church created hell. And this is a scene from that 2018 Robin Hood movie. Man. You know? And that's that's exactly what that is, man. This, this devil don't he don't fear hell. Because if he did, why he do all his madness on the earth? He don't fear a place where he's gonna burn forever. Because he knew that that's a myth a mythological place. That's that's not right. Fear not, Ecclesiastes 41 and 3, fear not the sentence of death. Remember them that have the, have been before thee and that come after, for this is the sentence of the Lord over all flesh. You see? It says, and why art thou against the pleasure of the Most High? Why are you trying to stop? 
these people from dying. It's part of their judgment. There is no inquisition, no questioning in the grave. And that's what that whole hell and all that other shit is. These different religions like Islam and Christianity they teach you that dumb shit. Let me let me show you something. Look at this. Listen to this. I ask, what happens to Muslims? Uh, what happens to Muslims in the grave after death? After burial, each person is interrogated. <laughs> this is Islam. This is what they teach in Islam. After, and I remember this because my uh, my uncle, he was a Muslim when he died, and my cousin, one of my cousins, we was in a car driving home or whatever, and um, he was saying all this shit. I was like, and even back then, I didn't. That shit didn't sound unbelievable. Right? It says, after the burial, each person is interrogated in the grave by two angels called Munkar and Nakai, Nakir, appointed by God to question the dead in order to test their faith. The righteous believers answer correctly and live in peace and comfort while the sinners and disbelievers fell and punishment ensues. You see this? This is this, and this is what the Muslims believe. Punishment of the grave, right? What happens to Christians at the death? That's the, uh, the body lies in rest, utterly devoid of any sensation or awareness, awaiting uh, reconstitution and resurrection and eternal perfection to join the soul that is already in heaven. Makes no sense. But the soul never sleeps. It enters the very presence of the Lord at the moment of death you see so a lot of this stuff these people just come up with their mind these are these are fear tactics for religions right it's all this shit is you know from it's, it's just mythology man and the scripture says what there's no inquisition in the grave nobody questioning you in the grave and why art thou against the pleasure of the most high there is no inquisition in the grave whether thou have lived 10 or 100 or thousand years you see you see? So this place is the place of judgment. All right? So I just wanted to bring this out. This is something that I looked up. I'm sure that other, from the apostles and the bishop elders and other brothers on down around the world going to do videos, have done videos, Pop so are, is what in there is. You know, hell is not a place in which our forefathers believed it. Right? We do understand the spiritual world. I was going to bring this one out in um, Second Corinthians, Paul's vision, Second Corinthians 12 and 1. It is not expedient for me, doubtless, to glory. I will come I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I knew a man in Hamashiach about 14 years ago. This is this is Paul speaking of himself. Whether in the body I cannot tell, or whether out of the body I cannot tell. The most I know is such and one caught up into the third heaven. And that's the spirit world. Everybody goes there. I knew I knew such a man, whether in the body or out the body, I cannot tell the most I know it, how that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which is not lawful for a man to utter. Of such a one will I glory, yet of myself I will not glory, but my affirmings, right? So he Paul saw the spirit world. He went to the spirit world. And he was like, Man, I'd rather go there than be be here. But it's needful for me to be here to do this work, right? And he didn't glory in the fact that he he died and went to paradise. And we, you can read that in the scriptures how he was stoned to death, and the Lord put his spirit back in his body, and he got up and walked away. You know what I'm saying? So our forefathers didn't fear death, man. Our, our forefathers didn't believe in hell, and that's what I'm telling this. Our forefathers did not believe in hell which our forefathers are the Israelites, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all our fathers, the patriarchs, the kings, the prophets. We do not believe in hell because hell didn't exist. All right, that's inshallah, I'm on to the next.